Hello friends, this is another episode of Robbie Tells, and I am going to tell you the story called Lucky Hans from the Grimm's Fairy Tales. So once upon a time in a land far, far away, there was a young man named Hans who worked hard and hard years and years for a very, very wealthy king. And after seven years, he decided, well, it's about time I go out on my own. And so Hans went up to the king and bowed deeply. Oh, king, please, will you release me from your service? For I have worked for you for seven years and wish to start my own life. And the king looked down at Hans and said, why, yes, you have been a very good servant to me. So here is your pay. And he threw a big lump of silver at Hans. And Hans cut his catch it. Oh, why, why, thank you, king. Thank you very much. <laughs> And off he was, carrying the heavy silver load on his back, walking down the dusty road out to the countryside. And as he was walking, he thought to himself, My, my, I am so lucky I have this big lump of silver. Why, with this, I can surely buy a house, or maybe have some chickens, or a goat, or even some cows. Wow. But it really is heavy. <laughs> it was very hot that day. And as he was walking down the road, he saw in the distance a little speck, and the speck became bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, until he saw the figure of a horse with a man right on top. And Hans, as the horse passed, Hans said out loud, My, my, I wish I had a horse like that. Why, if one has a horse like that, you won't have to walk around and tire out your feet, and your shoe leather will last a really long time. And my, 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 I bet there's a nice breeze up there on that horse. Now, the man on the horse heard Hans say this and stopped. He looked at Hans and said, Hello, boy. I hear you may be interested in a horse. Well, I'm not, I don't know if I'm interested. Well, if you are interested in this steed, he is a very fine horse, runs fast, is obedient. And if you want to make him gallop, all you have to say is, Giddy up, giddy up, and he will gallop as fast as the wind. Well, that does sound very nice, galloping as fast as the wind, you yeah. Well, what do you have to exchange, perhaps? Well, yeah, well, sir, I have, I have worked hard for a king for seven years, and I have my lump of silver as pay. Perhaps that is good? Why, yes, that is a grand offer. And he hopped down from his horse, and he took the silver. Why, thank you, and he walked away. Hans looked at the beautiful steed and thought, Oh, it's exactly what I've always wanted. Yes. And so he climbed up. Oh. All right, now what did he say? Go. Giddy up. And the horse sped off down the road, the wind blowing in Hans's hair. Ah, oh, yes. He was so happy. <clears throat> miles and miles he rode in the hot sun. And then suddenly he realized he didn't know how to make the horse stop. This was the problem. Oh, stop! The horse wouldn't listen to Hans until he saw a tree branch. Oh no! Oh, Fell right onto the ground. A couple of minutes later, Hans woke up. Oh, oh his head really hurt. His legs hurt. He thought he had broken his leg, but no, he was fine. Oh, oh, oh. So he got up and started walking the horse with a rope instead <clears> of <throat> riding it. He was pretty upset about that, obviously. It wasn't much longer that he saw, coming down the road, a man with a cow. And the man was driving the cow with a stick, taking the cow to, to market. <clears throat> and as the cow passed him, Hans said out loud, My, my. A cow. Look how calm it is. It doesn't run away. It doesn't throw you off of it like this, this, this untamely beast I have with me. And if you ever needed milk or cheese, well, you could just get it from the cow. Oh, if only I had a cow instead of this stupid horse. And the man with the cow heard Hans say this and said, Hey, Sonny, <laughs> or you might be in the market for this here cow I got with me. Well, uh, I don't know. I just traded the... That's a mighty fine horse you have there, boy. Well, yes, but I don't really know if I want to... Okay, I'll trade you the cow for the horse. How's that? 
Well, Hans thought to himself, it surely is a better deal than having the the uh, the horse. And, well, it's settled then. And off he went, speeding away on the horse. Now Hans had a lovely, lovely cow with him. And he began walking it down the old road with a stick. <clears throat> and along the way, Hans stopped at a restaurant and he got a nice big old drink of lemonade, got some food, and was on his way and kept walking. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And the sun was very high in the sky. It became very, very, very hot. <sighs> and after about 10 miles after leaving the restaurant, Hans ugh, sat down on a tree, but realized he had no nothing to drink. So he thought to himself, hmm, I have nothing to drink, but, oh, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll milk my cow and have a big glass of milk. That'll be great. And so Han sat down and not quite sure what to do, grabbed one of the teats on the other and started pulling. <laughs> nothing came out. Hans tried harder, pulling harder. <laughs> Until the cow, tired of Hans pulling so hard on its udder, gave him a big kick. Oh! And he's tumbled down the hill. <laughs> Landed flat in his back. Once again, Hans was in a lot of pain. Oh, 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 silly cow. Oh. And so walking down the road with his cow that gave him no milk, Hans kept going. It wasn't long before Hans spotted another man walking down the road, this time with a big, fat pig. And as the man and the pig passed, he thought to himself, Oh, wow. Wow, look at that. Wow, if one had a pig, you, you'd have enough you'd have enough bacon to last you ten months. You'd have pork chops and ham hocks and pig's feet and, ooh, pig brain, my favorite. And hearing this, the man said to Hans, oh, oh, yes, hey, hey, hey. So you like the look of my pig, huh? Well, I, I guess so. Well, this pig, it's a very, very special pig. In fact, it's, um, it tastes, tastes, this breed is just amazing. I mean, it'll blow your socks off. Oh, well, I don't really have any money. Yes, but you do have a fine cow there. Tell you what, I will trade you this pig for that cow, but you don't know. You don't want this. This cow's old. He doesn't have any milk. Nonsense. If, if anything, I'll just take it to be butchered. <laughs> no big deal. And so the trade was made, and Hans was happy with his new pig. And delightfully, he pulled the pig along with a little rope, dreaming about all the delicious bacon he would be eating pretty soon. <clears throat> and he was walking down the road, and he kept walking and walking until he saw a man carrying a ah, big fat goose. And as the man passed, he thought, he said out loud, oh my, uh, this pig is nice, but with a goose like that, wow, well, you'd have you'd have goose eggs and, and you can use the feathers to make a pillow and, and a blanket and, and a nice Christmas goose. Ooh, Christmas goose. Ooh. And the man, stopped and gave Hans a strange look and said, Young man, where did you get that pig? Oh, well, I, I, I got it from a man. See, I traded the, the pig for a cow, for a cow, and I got the cow, I traded it with a horse, and I got the, oh, yeah, yes, I don't, I don't really care about any of that. Where did, you, you said you got that from a man? Yes. Um, hmm. My, my, I, I think you may be in some trouble, my boy. Why is that? Han asked. Well, you see, in the town over, the mayor has had his pig stolen, and the police are wandering the roads looking for whoever stole such a pig. And I recognize the mayor's pig when I see it, and that's it. Oh no, a stolen pig. Well, I didn't know. I just, I, just, I got it fair and square. I, I, I don't, I'm not even from here, I swear. I was working for a king for 10 years. No, don't worry, my boy. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, I'll take the pig, and seeing as you're in trouble, I'll give you my goose as a gift. A gift? Really? Yes, yes. Yes, take it. To, you look like a young lad who needs some help. Oh, like, thank you so much. Uh, wow. And so, 
Hans was given the goose and he was so happy. He was car he carried the goose down and he was humming a little tune. Mm -hmm, I got a goose, I got a goose. It's gonna lay some big old eggs. It's gonna lay a lot of eggs. And then when it gets big and fat, I'll take a knife and... Uh, uh, and then he's heard something off in the distance. Something like a sound of like uh, grinding, a sound of metal upon stone. And so Hans followed the sound and when he arrived at the source, he was amazed for he had found the knife sharpener with his big, uh, with his big grinding wheel, doing his craft, sharpening knives, shh, singing a little tune. Oh, how I love sharpening knives. It's good for me. It's good for the knives. They get really sharp and people pay me to sharpen their knives. Ding! And so Hans went up carrying the goose and began a conversation with the man, fascinated at his craft. And the man told Hans, Ah, yes, if you learn how to sharpen knives, my boy, well, you'll never be want for money. And you'll have something so valuable. You'll have a skill that you can use wherever you go. Oh, well, <laughs> that's nice and all, but uh, I don't have a stone like you. Well, I'll tell you what. I got an extra one right here. And I'll teach you how to do how to, how to sharpen knives. If you give me, of course, your nice fat goose there. And I just thought about it for a little bit. Mm. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the goose for the for the grinding wheel. Yes. <clears throat> oh, that's settled then. And so, over the next couple days, Hans stayed with the man, and he taught him all he knew about knife sharpening. And at the end of the three days, Hans was selling his way with a heavy stone in a sack over his back. And Hans thought, well, this is really nice. I know how to do this now, but ugh, gosh, I wish I had like a cart or something or... Or, it's just like the silver. Oh, it really hurts my back. And after a while, the sun was high in the sky. And so Hans was getting thirsty. And he saw below a big hill at the end of the bottom of the hill. was a nice, fresh, flowing stream of water with cold, delicious, icy glacier water for him. And so he decided to go take a drink. But as he put down the sack, the stone fell out and began to roll down the river. And Hans, trying to stop it, ran as fast as he could down the hill. Oh no, oh no, but he fell. And landed at the bottom. Unfortunately, the stone had landed in the middle of the stream. Several times Hans dived in, trying to pull it from the mucky bottom, but it was too heavy. Eventually, exhausted, he lay by the stream, and he looked up at the sky, and he began to laugh. <laughs> and he said to himself, I don't need any of these things. My, my, the world is a beautiful place full of beautiful things. And there's so much more for me out here than these material possessions that I've come across. I can't wait to see what new adventures await me down the dusty road. And so Hans walked away and lived happily ever after. Well, I hope you enjoyed that story. Lucky Hans. And I hope you tune in next time for another Robbie Tells. Have a wonderful evening.